My name is Antonio Lain, and I'm the founder of Caviar's Labs. This talk goes against the dogma that you should stick to one core idea and keep drilling it down. Instead, this will be more like a scatter plot. Take nine things about KVJS that I personally feel proud of and give you a highlight of what they are, why they are useful, and how we implemented them. The canning plan is that at least one of them will tickle your curiosity, and then you will read the docs, download the framework, play a bit with it, and eventually deploy your first Hello World for free using the KBS Cloud. Here is the list. They cover aspects of reliability, security, IoT, communication patterns, or the KBS Cloud. It is unlikely that you will be interested in all of them, but they are mostly self-contained, and you can use the links in the YouTube page to jump around. One. Stateful Lambdas. I think of a stateful lambda as a fold operation over a stream of inputs that uses a serverless function and a state partition. The caller provides an ID to select the initial state, the target function f, and some other arguments. The framework creates the initial state SID0 and calls f, which returns two things. First, some output for the caller or for other services, and second, the new state SID1. This state becomes the input state for the next invocation with the same ID, serializing the calls. But the state partition is private, and stateful lambdas with different IDs can now all execute in parallel. Stateful lambdas in KVGS operate on kilobytes of data, not on large data sets. They can hold secrets or references to external blobs of data or counters, or they could encode a state machine. We use them to orchestrate service API calls and to trigger actions in the physical world. They both require state to make them safe and reliable. We enforce a strict serialization of calls with the actor model. Hundreds of Node.js processes could be run in your app, but there is at most one actor instance with a given ID. And this actor has a queue for pending requests, waiting for all the asynchronous steps of the current one to finish. In KVJS, we call actors cloud assistants, or CAs, to make clear that this is not a general purpose actor system. Two, external consistency. What happens if a server crashes, bringing down your processes? To respect serialization, we need to checkpoint the state after each invocation. And in KVJS, we do that extremely fast with Redis, an in-memory database enabling checkpointed real-time interactions. But that's not enough. What if we send a notification with a new state and then crash before we can checkpoint? Our recovery state will be different from what others expect, and that's a problem. They could take actions, assuming that we are on board, or we could receive requests that we don't understand. And this can trigger bugs in your code or affect other subsystems. To avoid that, we need to externalize the output after checkpointing. And to delay external actions, KVJS uses transactional plugins. But what happens with these ex external actions if we crash just after the checkpoint? the checkpoint should also contain a description of these actions so that we can retry them right after recovering the state. And retrying them several times is always safe because the transactional plugins also make them more important. Three, proactive programming. 
With reactive programming, actions are triggered by processing a stream of events. A complement to reactive programming is proactive programming, where we can trigger actions with no events, for example, by pulling external services periodically or computing background tasks. Why is that useful? It can lower the perceived latency with a push model. For example, with proactive server-side rendering, or PSSR, the server does not wait for the client request. Whenever there is a significant change in the state of the CA, and it assumes there is an active client, it renders the page and pushes it to a Redis cache closer to the client. And then the client can load it from the cache really fast, even though it's dynamic content. We use PSSR and proactive programming to implement cloud-based multitasking. The goal is to offload computations to the cloud while making them look like local background tasks. The framework implements proactive programming by creating a local stream of pulls requests. This is very cost effective. Compared with the cost of a DIY with Google Cloud Run and Firestore, it is almost a hundred times cheaper. Standard serverless platforms are not optimized for sub-millisecond calls. Four, three-way isomorphic. To interact with arbitrary IoT devices, we need to write some breaching code. But we want the same code to run in a Raspberry Pi, in the browser, or in the cloud. Running breaching code in the browser means that an Android phone with Chrome is all you need to share local Bluetooth devices. And when it runs in the cloud, we can perform load testing at scale, impersonate offline devices, or interact with devices that have a public IP address. In your laptop, you can run your app with an emulated device and a local cloud, and then debug it using standard Chrome developers tools. And with tools like Browserify, create a code bundle for the browser, where low-level APIs have been replaced by web APIs. Five, time bundles. We want to accurately synchronize actions with global time in millions of devices. A bundle provides timing between actions in a sequence and a starting UTC time for the first one. At any time, only actions from one bundle are executed in a device. And therefore, when the next bundle starts, previous pending actions are ignored. Decoupling a starting time from arrival time helps with the scale and provides smooth transitions between bundles. The single bundle policy enables quick changes of device behavior or custom recovery actions for when we lose network connectivity. The client library synchronizes device clocks with the cloud, providing an NTP fallback. And it is easy to create bundles with code introspection and proactive programming. Six, share maps. A share map is a single writer distributed data structure that can replicate the state in a very cost-effective manner. Actors see a share map as internal state, in some cases read-only, and share maps always respect the serialization of requests. A share map could contain serialized JavaScript code, and then it becomes a custom replicated object. And we can also replicate share maps in the browser or in IoT devices, providing a convenient way to update code and data everywhere. The single writer policy is enforced by the trusted bus, and we use share maps to describe and propagate security policies. The name of the writer CA is part of the name of the share map, so that you can avoid running untrusted code. 
And to update the share map, you only need one update per Node.js process, not per CA. And with thousands of CAs in a process, you get a massive performance improvement. Share maps are implemented with four technologies. A transactional plugin that provides external consistency, a Redis backend to checkpoint and propagate updates, an immutable data structure with a structural sharing that respects serialization, and a JavaScript eval function to execute serialized code. 7. Linked local namespaces. This is an idea from Satsi, a distributed authorization framework. In KBS, a user has a namespace that provides local names for resources, such as CAs. A resource can have multiple names, and a name could resolve to multiple resources, defining a group. A name could also resolve to a name defining another namespace, effectively creating a link between namespaces. And when we resolve a local name, we also recursively follow these links, effectively adding all the reachable resources to a group defined by this name. An access control list, or ACO, could contain a local name, which resolves to a group of CAs. And then the trusted bus uses this ACO and the name of the authenticated caller to decide whether a CA method call should be allowed. The benefit of linking is that we can delegate to others the maintenance of group membership. It also simplifies federating account services. Usernames registered in an account service are just local names in its namespace, and the name of the service is a public key. To add a foreign user, just create a link and use the new public key to validate credentials. Local namespaces are implemented with share maps, and then a linked local namespace becomes a link between share maps. To implement the recursive traversal, we use a higher abstraction that we call an aggregate map. Trust is not a transitive property, as in any Facebook user will explain you, and practical delegation chains are short. Therefore, an aggregate map only needs to traverse a few share maps, guaranteeing fast lookups. 8. Profit as you go. Serverless functions have a paper invocation model, but the state lingers, and we also want predictable low latency. And all that costs money. They also have a full managed backend, which flexes resources based on load. But combining paper invocations with flex based on load is very dangerous. A mistake or an exploit and your infrastructure build explodes. For this reason, in the KBS Cloud, we made three changes. First, provide an initial incubator mode where we can charge a minimal baseline cost for keeping an app alive, about 10 cents per week. Second, don't flex resources based on load. Instead, flex resources based on the number of subscribed CAs and the plan selected by the programmer. Third, manage subscription payments for each active CA, take a cut based on the infrastructure costs, and then give the rest to the programmer as profit. Profit as you go. When profits cover the baseline costs, there are no more bills. And it becomes similar to an app store, but hosting a complex custom backend. It also enables the ultimate meritocratic platform. When you sign up, you get a few units for free, enough to deploy an app for a few weeks and get a few subscribers to pay your baseline costs. So that means that a kid from Nigeria with no credit card or bank account 
now has a chance to bootstrap a global and very profitable business, purely based on talent. So it does not matter who you are or where you live. The only thing that matters is what you can do. So how is this implemented? The programmer chooses the percentage of revenue that is profit and the plan. That fixes the price in number of days the CA runs with one unit. And a unit is 10 cents plus cost. We set hard limits on memory, CPU and egress traffic based on the plan and the number of CAs. We help programmers choose the best plan for their app by providing statistics on actual usage versus resources provided. 9. Unbundle peer-to-peer -peer payments. In the KBS Cloud, units are transferable but non-refundable. How do you cash out without a credit card or bank account? Peer-to-peer -peer mobile payment systems are much more widespread and they are mostly free. Or you could also trade units for hard cash. But in order to do that, you need a reasonably safe mechanism to exchange units. A mechanism that is agnostic to the payment method and does not require complex mediation or overhead. The general problem is intractable. But if we make the assumption that payments are just a few dollars, and mostly within stable long-term relationships, then we can focus on bootstrapping these relationships with minimal fraud cost. The KBS Cloud provides a two-phase protocol that combines an escrow account for units with a reputation system purely based on protocol outcomes. With an escrow account, we ensure that a unit is not being sold many times and the seller is not bluffing and has the units and they have been reserved just for you for the next hour. With a reputation system, we force bad agents to burn through profiles quickly so that we can identify long-term good agents. The protocol updates the reputation system without knowing who was at fault. This means that a good agent will also get a bad mark when they are cheated. This may not sound fair, but it encourages them to be more careful. And over a long period of time, they will have fewer bad marks than the bad agents. If any of the nine topics intrigue you, there's much more information on our website. The framework and examples are open source and they are in GitHub. And you can sign up to the KBS Cloud for free. And we would love to hear from you. Thanks for listening.